Next. How about that table? How about that table? I am getting my kneaded eraser to I'll get rid of some of these guys. This table is, once again, here's my value sketch. And um, this is really my road map and guide. I'm th thinking of the table as just sort of a either a white or a light valued color. It might be creamy, it might be uh, white, it might be light yellow, it might be light blue, all sorts of possibilities. But um, I'm just going to leave it sort of um, white ish. And uh, there's a little bit that I'm going to do, try to do a little bit of. Uh, value change similar to the background and that um, it's going to get a little darker as it goes this way. A couple other things. Um, we'll be addressing this big shadow shape um, in subsequent passes. This first pass I'm just tr going to try to get a little bit of color going in in the places where I kind of want it to be. And what I um, I'm probably going to do what I will do. I just decided right now. <laughs> uh, one of the things I do like to do is is bring in a little bit of whatever color is above to um, have f fun with um, the notion of reflected color, reflected light, bouncing color, bouncing light. That's a whole uh, fun discussion. But uh, I'll show you what I'm talking about when I get there. Um, and I'm just going to bring in a little, try to introduce a little bit of um, violet gray color. I'm probably going to, um, I'm going to use some mixes of the, uh, that indigo and the quinacridone rose. But uh, let's see. So this table, couple, couple options. Um, what I think I'm going to do is, it's it's getting to the point where it's really um, maybe a little bit too small for this particular size hockey brush. There's other things you can do, and you might be able to just sort of manage it with your round brush. Um, what I'm going to do is wet it just a little bit with the, the hockey brush. And then come back with my round brush and define this shape with water. It's another kind of wacky shape. But it does include the entire table. Well, uh, I'm painting through the... Uh, the shadow going around the avocado on the bottle, but painting through or the shadow. And this is a little bit similar to background and um, having a little bit of fun with not being so worried, especially on this first pass. So I'm going to mix up a little bit of that indigo. And a little bit of the quinacridone rose till I get sort of a a light, sort of a light watery. That's better. Um, a little bit of a watery, grayed out violet. And I'm going to bring some of that color just into the top here. And that's going to, it's not meant to um, be the shadow shape. It's just meant to kind of, as it dries, it's going to create its own kind of cool little effects with, um, with the rest of the colors. I still want to keep it pretty light as I get towards the bottom. But let's see, as underneath the... Uh, as I get down by the avocado, I want to have some green. 
that I'm going to imagine is sort of reflecting off of the the avocado onto the table. And there's, oh, I don't know, there's green around here. Swish that around a little. I can see this guy. Uh, there's a bunch of water down here that I'm going to sop up a little bit. And then over underneath the bottle, I, I do know that things are drying a little bit, so I don't want to take too much time. But um, around the bottle, I'm going to just lay down a little bit of blue like that. Moving it around, you can see it's still really quite light, very watery. Clean up that edge a little, sure, why not? So hopefully you can see that that's basically just kind of doing a, a graded wash from a light, light color, white in this particular case, to a combination of a few different things. A little bit of green, a little bit of blue, a little bit of grayed out violet around here. And what I'll do um, after this dries is I will come in and really address the uh, the shadow shape as as more of a shape unto itself there. Okay, I'll let that dry.